schemas or schemata are an important concept in cognitive psychology and pop up all over the place. We're going to take a look at the concept with a couple of examples, but first, the obvious question. What actually is a schema? A schema is a mental framework that organises and synthesises information about something. It's a conceptual file in your mental filing cabinet, storing useful information to help you live life at the speed of life. Without schemata, we'd have to be so much more attentive to the particulars of every single moment that's going on in order to understand what's happening. Great for accuracy, but terrible for effort. And we simply don't have the mental resources to live life without taking a few mental shortcuts. And that's exactly what schemata are. The wildly influential developmental psychologist Jean Piaget used schemata to explain cognitive development in children. As a child builds their knowledge of the world around them, they form mental representations which will continue to aid their learning as they grow. For example, when a child demonstrates that they've learned how to grasp a rattle in their hand, they're said to have developed a grasping schema. When the child learns how to pick that rattle up from a surface, they've developed a picking up schema. This is their knowledge that they can apply to other objects that can be grasped or picked up. According to Piaget, a child uses two processes to adapt to its environment with the help of schemata, assimilation and accommodation. With assimilation, new information is modified to fit a pre-existing schema. For example, a child whose concept of animals only includes the categories of cat and dog might see a rabbit and call it a cat. She recognises that it's a furry animal. A cat is a furry animal. This must therefore be a new type of cat. Accommodation, on the other hand, is the process by which new information changes old schemata. Using the same animal example, if the child instead decides that the rabbit is not a cat or a dog, she'll now need to include a new category within her concept of animals. Rabbit. Piaget reckoned that during periods of quick and radical change, a child will use accommodation more than assimilation. However, once accommodation has then taken place, a child would then generally return to primarily using assimilation. So what about adults? Well, continuing with Piaget's classification of certain periods of life being periods of radical change, it's fair to say that adulthood generally isn't one of those times, so assimilation prevails. And in adulthood, it's our schemas of people that are of particular interest. Picking up a rattle isn't quite so interesting when you're 25, but how we prejudge people and situations using stereotypes, pretty much another word for schemas in this case, is of much more concern. Schemas are very important and can be beneficial. However, they're not always, and stereotyping is one such example that can have negative social consequences. Research in social cognition suggests that schemas about social identities tend to be organised in one of two ways, a prototype or an exemplar. A prototype is a non-specific generalisation of a type, a hazy description that doesn't quite describe any one particular person, but gathers the gist of an identity. An exemplar is a representation of a particular person who you hold in mind as a representation of a wider group. For example, you might have a prototype representation of man, tall, short hair, wears trousers, has facial hair, talks with a deep voice, and so on. Alternatively, you might hold an image of Arnold Schwarzenegger in your mind as an exemplar of your concept of man. Neither is more correct or accurate than the other. Both are mental constructs aimed at simplifying the social world by reducing the infinite diversity of people into a limited number of comprehensible categories. If we stop and think about it for just a minute, and recent global events have made a lot of people ponder on this very thought. Having a stereotype, or schema, about people based on their nationality, gender, race, occupation, is absurd. There's sure to be great diversity within these groups. However, without some method of mental simplification, we simply wouldn't have the mental resources available to get on with our day. 
Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and useful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend who might be interested as well. And if you've got something to add to the conversation, I look forward to reading your thoughts and comments below. If it's your first time here, please subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.